Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Wednesday, the 15th of May, and I'm reading morning prayer, come worship morning prayer from the Church of England for Ascension Tide, Ascension to Pentecost. I just had to restart my laptop so it'll bong in a moment uh, because the Zoom app is just updated and the Zoom program isn't allowing me to open it. But if you want to uh, join me by Zoom, the code on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook and that is operational. And uh, it stays there for a video for you to watch at your leisure. And I'm recording the audio. I uh, hope and pray that I can upload that onto YouTube presently. That's on Dominic Doble's YouTube channel. So i just uh, restarted and uh, Zoom is now functioning. Great. So the words are in the book, Common Worship Daily Prayer, um, in the morning and evening prayer during the seasons section, morning prayer from Ascension to Pentecost. Uh, you may find the words also at the Church of England's website, Aremus Daily Prayer, and downloadable as app for Apple or Android device. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory forever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light, and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Song of God's Righteousness, verses from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion satisfies you with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalms this morning, numbers 2 and 29. You'll find the psalms at the back of the book. Psalm 2 and 29. The Lord is the strength of his people, a safe refuge for his anointed. Why are the nations in tumult, and why do the peoples devise a vain plot? The kings of the earth rise up, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their bonds asunder and cast away their cords from us. He who dwells in heaven shall laugh them to scorn. The Lord shall have them in derision. <coughs> Excuse me. Then shall he speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son, this day have I begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O kings, be prudent, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and with trembling kiss his feet, lest he be angry, and you perish from the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are all they 
We take refuge in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people, a safe refuge for his anointed. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Ascribe to the Lord, you powers of heaven. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is, a, is mighty in operation. The voice of the Lord is a glorious voice. <clears throat> the voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flash of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. In his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the water flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord should give his people the blessing of peace. Scrolling past our first reading to the canticle, Song of Ezekiel, turning back in your books to morning prayer during Ascension. The Spirit of God fills the whole world, Alleluia. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses. A new heart I will give you, and put a new spirit within you. I will remove from your body the heart of stone, and give you a heart of flesh. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. So to my first Bible reading, Numbers 23 from 13. Uh, Numbers is a third book in, uh, from the beginning of the Hebrew Scriptures, so if your Bible has both covenants there, it begins with Genesis. Um, and uh, two or three books in, you'll find Numbers. We're looking for the large number 23 in the margin within the book of Numbers, chapter 23. And we're reading from verse 13, so the verse numbers are the small numbers in the text. Numbers 23 from 13. Scroll back from the canticle if you're following electronically. So Balak said to him, come with me to another place from which you may see them. You shall see only part of them and shall not see them at all. Then cursed them for me from there. So he took him to the field of Zerpim, to the top of Pisgah. He built seven altars and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Balaam said to Balak, stand here beside your burnt offering while I meet the Lord over there. The Lord met Balaam, put a word into his mouth, and said, Return to Balak, and this is what you shall say. When he came to him, he was standing beside his burnt offerings with the officials of Moab. Balak said to him, What has the Lord said? Then Balaam uttered his oracle, saying, Rise, Balak, and hear. Listen to me, O son of Zippor. God is not a human being that he should lie, or a mortal that he should change his mind. He has, has he promised, and will he not do it? Has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? See, I received a command to bless. He has blessed, and I cannot revoke it. He has not beheld misfortune in Jacob, nor has he seen trouble in Israel. The Lord their God is with them, acclaimed as a king among them. God who brings them out of Egypt is like the horns of a wild ox for them. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, no divination against Israel. Now it shall be said to Jacob, of Jacob and Israel, see what God has done. Look, a people rising up like a lioness and rousing itself like a lion. It does not lie down until it has eaten the prey and drunk the blood of the slain. And Balak said to Balaam, Do not curse them at all, and do not bless them at all. But Balaam answered, Balak, did I not tell you? Whatever the Lord says, that is what I must do. So Balak said to Balaam, Come now, I will take you to another place. Perhaps it will please God that you may curse them from there. So Balak took Balaam to the top of Peel, which overlooks the wastelands. Balaam said to Balak, Build me seven altars here, and prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me. So Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. <coughs> so, um... Balak is um, one of these rulers of a city-state area. God's people are um, 
settled in and around and amongst them and uh, are settling and uh, Balak doesn't like it he calls on uh, a godly prophet to curse God's people and uh, he's the one who on his way the donkey told him not to and uh, he's obviously already uttered a blessing rather than a curse um, Balak doesn't learn he's given him another um, massive feast and uh, He's just blessed them again. And at the conclusion of today's reading, uh, we see the massive feast has been prepared for the next episode. So we're on tent hooks to see um, whether, in fact, uh, God will curse his people now. But um, interestingly, right in the middle of that blessing, we've got the lines, The Lord their God is with them, acclaimed as king among them. So um, historians and academics divided as to whether God's people ever were actually in Egypt, but they were in exile, I think, right in saying that. And uh, so the received wisdom now is that these are um, either oral traditions that were penned at the time of exile and coming out, or they were, um, if you like, stories that were generated and created in and around the time of exile as they were coming out of exile and being restored. And uh, it makes sense to have a story of people coming out of slavery and inhabiting a new land with God as, as their overseer and um, various leaders who, um, if they are obeyed, things go well, and if they're not, they don't. Uh, if you're trying to lead a people back into um, Ukraine, or if it's at all possible, rebuilding um, Palestine, or those parts of it that were left to the um, Arabs and Muslims and Christian Arabs uh, in that place, um, that it would be good to have a construct, uh, either actually or uh, presented as being from their history, that uh, is an example of how, if we do as we're told, things will go well for us, whether it's to give power to a deity, or whether it's to give power to us as their leaders, or vesting the power in the deity that we might have the power, sort of by proxy, if you like, it makes the people easier to direct and control. Not necessarily a bad way, and the uh, Book of Judges starts with God as king and ends with uh, a human sovereign. And therein lies the rub. Everyone did what was right in their own sight, we read at the end of Judges. And uh, it's one of those things in uh, ancient writings, Jewish writing, I guess they got it from Babylonians, that uh, the central message is the most important. So here we are to say, right, the, the most important thing at the beginning or the end of our interview, um, or the beginning or end of our sermon or address, but here, right in the middle, the Lord, their God, is with them, acclaimed as a king among them. And if that is our experience, if we put God at the centre of our lives, our hearts, our efforts, our conscience, um, then... We will be blessed. Um, that may not mean in terms of money or honour, but in terms of ease of living and conscience, living with ourselves, and really and truly living in our community, because people, once they get over the, the hump of us being true and just and people integrity and authenticity, they actually prefer that because they know where we are, and it can even encourage others to live the same, and it gives us a firm basis on which to suggest to others that they do live right and well and true and uh, righteous lives. Luke 8 from 16, our second reading then, let's move on to that. Let's scroll past the canticle that splits the two as it's presented electronically. We have the Gospel of Luke, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, the third book uh, in the second covenant, the Greek scriptures. Uh, starts two-thirds of the way through your Bible if you have both covenants in front of you. Matthew, Mark, and then Luke. And within the Gospel of Luke, we'll look at chapter 8, large number in the margin. Ahead of the paragraph, chapter number 8, and the small numbers are the verses, of course. Uh, Luke chapter 8, and we're looking for verse 16. To 25. No one, after lighting a lamp, hides it under a jar or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a lampstand so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden, not be disclosed, nor is any secret that will not become known and become too light. Then pay attention to how you listen. For to those who have more, for, for to those who have more will be given, and from those who do not have, even what they have will be taken away. <clears throat> then his mother and his brothers came to him, but they could not reach him because of the crowd. And he was told, "Your mother and your brothers are standing outside, wanting to see." But he said to them, "My brother and my." Mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. One day he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across the other side of the lake. So he put out and while they were sailing, he fell asleep. A gale swept down on the lake and the boat was filling with water and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. He woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased and there was calm. And he said to them, where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, who then is this? And he commands even the winds and the water and they obey him. <coughs> Three little separate 
can't remember the word, fragments um, of a story. Entering how sometimes these things are presented together and sometimes separately, and whether we get more or less from them as they're presented together or separately um, is a moot point. So, um, first of all, it stands, it starts easy enough. Um, you don't um, hide a light after lighting it, <coughs> but you put it on a lampstand. <coughs> And uh, there are all sorts of ways in which we can think about that, whether it's uh, us coming to faith and needing to give that out publicly, <clears throat> whether it's the church being uh, reticent in addressing um, injustice, <clears throat> uh, whether it's our um, discipleship and learning. But the paragraph moves on to talk about everything will be disclosed. And that gives a slight sort of polish. But more or less that just means we're accountable and people know what we're doing as individuals as church. And if not us, God knows uh, what we and others are doing. And then the challenging lines at the end. Those who have loads will get more stuff and those who don't have anything, even that will be taken away. Um, I'm immediately thinking of uh, the Holy Land again, <clears throat> but uh, the assumption is that this is um, those of faith who operate in faith will have more responsibility within the church, and or it could be given uh, what Jesus says in the next it was recorded saying in the next paragraph it could be hyperbole and sarcasm or irony, unless we do light the light and put it on the lamp stand then injustice will continue and the rich will get richer the poor will get poorer the hyperbole continues if that is what it is in the second paragraph where we read jesus being told his family are outside and uh, he says actually my family are here those that hear the word and do it so that is similar to that idea of the light lighting a lamp and putting it on a stand it's not just uh, hearing it but doing it it's not just a private faith it's public our church buildings very often are very significant in the townscape, the landscape, um, particularly if they're illuminated at night, as uh, St Mary's Halesworth has become in the last few months, to my great satisfaction and joy. Um, not necessarily my idea, but it's just a sign of hope and light and this idea here, really. And uh, be inspired if you are somebody of faith who is concerned whether you should or you shouldn't speak up or speak out. Yes, with wisdom, be as uh, wise as serpents and gentle as doves. But... Uh, we become Jesus' family if we act as lights on a lampstand. And then if that gets into trouble and we find ourselves in storms of relationship, of emotion, at work or at home, then uh, Jesus will awake as we pray, as we call on him, and will come to our aid and calm those storms. And uh, we should not be afraid or amazed, but uh, we may well be. And uh, Jesus says, where is your faith? I don't know whether that is a negative uh, accusation or whether it's a um, reassurance in a sort of rabbinic debating style that actually their faith has caused what has happened, the calming of the storm to happen. So again, we can engage and interpret that, whether we're feeling positive or negative and whether we want to be encouraged or rebuked by what we read and what is best for us at this moment as this word, living word, speaks into our lives and hearts. To the response we then, back in morning prayer, Ascension Tide, come Holy Spirit, fill the heart of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people, renew the face of your creation, Lord, pouring on us the gift of your Spirit and kindle in us the fire of your love. For the creation waits with eager longing for the glorious liberty of the children of God. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. The Song of Zechariah. Christ has gone up on high and has led captivity captive. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, to remember his holy covenant, 
This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Christ has gone up on high, and has led captivity captive. Alleluia. Make a lover, keep a three in one, one in three. We thank you for uh, bringing us to the beginning of this day. And uh, whilst there are many that are unhappy about the rain, I'm thinking of the Bluetooth it's now a nest box, a bit left field perhaps, but uh, rain doesn't help them. Um, gather grubs from the plants because they're washed off and they're both flying about at full tilt trying to feed their chicks in the nest. And uh, people accustomed to it generally being dry and are concerned at uh, the weather. So for those of us who've moved up to the east from the western seaboard, rain is quite a normal part of our everyday lives, and we thank you for its refreshing, its nurturing, its cleansing, and uh, the idea of uh, the latter rains being the Holy Spirit, bringing life and fruition to our desert wilderness of our experience, aside from God. And we pray that lives will be blessed and nurtured by your reigning, uh, with both spellings, in, on, over, around us, that uh, righteousness and justice may prevail. Bangladesh, Bhutan, Nepal, prayers from the World Council of Churches, we thank for the breathtaking beauty of those lands, the mountains and low grandeur, overflowing rivers and green paddy fields, overflowing as a rule in a good way, seasonally. Uh, those who have lost families and homes in earthquakes and other disasters, they struggle to rebuild their lives, homes and infrastructure, so that's flooding. In a bad way, <coughs> Bangladesh, <coughs> I can't remember, a few years ago, lost something ridiculous, like third or fifth, was it, of its land area? I don't know, anyway, vast, vast area. And uh, we, I know individual homes and businesses get flooded, and that's a challenge and awful, but losing whole chunks, whole regions to floods is uh, quite a different thing. May we recognise our responsibilities and act appropriately. Christian Action, Research and Education, we intercede the UK Parliament and the Northern Ireland Assembly, reach righteous conclusion on issues of life and liberty, especially they consider our freedom of expression, religion, belief, proposed legislation uh, on various issues such as suicide and abortion and uh, other ethical matters. There will be different um, opinions um, across the church and across the nations in relation to such things. From Green Christian, there's a talk tonight. Uh, look, at Green, look up Green Christian's website if you want to book. It's free. Uh, you get the link by signing up. Uh, the talk is from Guy Standing, talking about the politics of time. Describes the history of how different eras have regarded time and how there are now a host of inequalities in relation to who has the freedom of their own time and who doesn't. Whose work is recognised and valuable and those for whom it is taken for granted many came to light as people considering such things during the pandemic. It sounds quite sort of highbrow, but I suspect for the organisation it would be well worth signing up to and engaging with if that's your thing. The Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is our engagement with the environment. Pope Francis' prayer for creation includes the lines, O oh God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth. So precious in your eyes, bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. In our benefit cycle of prayer, we pray on Wednesdays for teachers, and we thank you for those who teach people independent living, who teach people reading, writing, arithmetic, sports and arts, that uh, we may be the freer and fuller in our ability to express ourselves. We pray that they might have adequate terms and conditions, adequate uh, equal numbers of staff members. We pray for those who are looking at the bigger picture as numbers of children being born and going down, how we sustain and promote and um, continue um, which of our local schools and uh, the numbers of teachers as pay demands and requirements go up we'll be able to afford fewer and how do we then model our classes and class structures uh, within the primary schools locally we thank you for our people looking after our churches 
pray for our wardens, uh, John and Chris at Holton, Jonathan Weniston, Ginny at Bramfield, um, Charlie uh, taking the reins at Blyford, uh, Mike at Thorrington. Uh, we pray for their uh, colleagues as treasurers and secretaries, um, those on the electoral roll, holding got names of Jill, Helen, Anton, Dot, Betty, Mary, Diane, Marjorie, Joan, Gillian, Linda, Eric, Phyllis, Edith, Jim and Jackie, and in Weniston will include Alison, also the Margaret, Bloomfield, Goldson, Goldston, Angela, Mary, Moore, Francis, Valerie, Dorothy, Jane, Robert, Heather, Cyrilla, Colin, Jennifer, Felicity, Vivian, Graham, Ruth, John, Sally, David, Diana, Joanna, Jean, Suzanne, Francis, and Colin. And uh, Thorrington, Marjorie, Rivers, Liz, Gwen, and Simon, we pray your blessing on them. And uh, ask you to draw other people into those committees. Uh, <clears throat> we could do with um, need treasurer in two of them and we could do with um, at least another four people on each just as uh, general doers but uh, we could do with another church warden in each two and we do with two church wardens really in Holton and uh, a secretary in Thorrington we need a sec oh, we've got a secretary we could do with another warden in uh, Blyford. So uh, thank you that uh, Alfred is uh, stepping up as acting alongside Ginny and Bramfield. So we pray for growth in numbers in those committees that the church maintenance and events programmes may grow, that its influence may grow and uh, people may come to recognise and use the buildings for what they are and then in time uh, understand, believe in what they stand for. To their own benefit, as well as that of the building and community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <laughs> Then he Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, have ascended into the heavens, so we in heart and mind may also ascend and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit as our Saviour toward us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.